Gotta go out and have me a time on this old town Cause I've been feeling down Tonight I'm feeling just fine Welcome to the Ancient Radio Players production of the Oaky Red Dust Christmas Review Bits, skits, and quips from that town here in Oklahoma where the dust is red And so are the necks so get your eggnog and plate of reindeer hot links and kick back and enjoy the Ancient Radio Players presentation of the Oaky Red Dust Christmas Review. Gonna hitch him up and ride a little billy down to Piccadilly. Have me a time with a dance hall girl. Gonna whoop it up, gonna change my luck. Cause tonight I'm feeling just fine. Tonight I'm feeling just fine. We now bring you the news, more news, more yokel, more meaningless. You'll find it right here. Take it away. Thank you, House Red Dust. Good, I hope. Headline, man proclaims Velveeta the perfect food. You heard it right here, folks. Dr. Rick Sanders, food chemist and chemical at Chemicals Industries, has purchased a recent article that says why Velveeta is perfection. In it, he explains why and how Velveeta is the perfect food. Well, this is good news for the Red Desk School Cafeteria, as every day is Belvedere Day. You see, kids, the lunch ladies do know their stuff, after all. Headline, Lawyer Takes Home Remedy Into His Own Hands. Local lawyer Webster Elliott decided that knowing the law wasn't enough, and he decided to take on medicine as well. As many of you know, Webster had been complaining of a pesky ward on his arm for some time now, and after some deliberation, Webster burned the said ward off his arm with a can of Freon. Now the guilty wart and half of Webster's arm hair are gone. The good news, the wart will not be coming back. The bad news, neither will the arm hair. A red dust hats off to you, Webster. Headline, local grandma takes on nativity theme scene bandit. Local resident Mrs. Harry Akins, or as everyone else knows her, Mimi Mom Akins, chased a possible bandit from her yard last night. Mimi Ma Atkins is known around Wahoso County for her nativity scene that she constructs every year in her yard. This year's motif was an Elvis themed nativity complete with the wise men in rhinestones and the camels wearing black leather. <laughs> Mimi Ma Atkins nearly caught a young heathen, as she called him, trying to nab her Priscilla Mary from the front lawn. <laughs> Mimi Ma Atkins chased the would-be thief with a sledgehammer for a block and a half before she just gave up and flung it at him. <laughs> Way to go, Mimi Ma. We'll see you in church next Sunday. The news brought to you by Rubber Bait. If you want to catch a fish and you want it fast, use Rubber Bait and a really good cast. Don't use men or lures or other live bait or something that smells like you've done been ate. Rubber Bait, Rubber Bait, Rubber Bait. This year's Christmas rubber bait special, genuine synthetic reindeer flavored rubber bait. The fish will go yum yum for a little bit of reindeer. That's rubber bait. If it ain't rubber, it ain't bait. Thank you. Now as you all know, the annual Red Dust Christmas Parade is about to get started on Main Street in downtown Red Dust. This is a long standing tradition for us here in Red Dust and we will look forward to it almost as much as we do having Santa Claus come down our chimney every year. The floats, tractors and the Red Dust High School band are getting lined up and ready to go and we go there live to our morning drive guys Buck and Henry to see if all is ready with the parade. Buck, Henry? Greetings and salutarians. Howdy y'all. Uh, what did he want us to do Buck? Well tell the folks that's listening about the parade's gonna start. Yeah, any minute now. Uh, can we go inside? I'm freezing. Henry. <laughs> well I am. The parade ain't even started yet. You watch it and tell me how it goes. Well, it's part of our job, Henry. I thought we were the morning drive guys, but Well, it's Christmas and the parade. Everyone loves the parade. Says you. Come on. I like the Christmas part, but, but, and you can have the parade. It's just a bunch of trailers with cheerleaders on them and the, Band and then the horses and you know what they do to the street. Henry, what are you getting for Christmas? No idea. You? Well, I don't know either, Henry, but I tell you, I'm strapped this year to buy Christmas presents. Well, why didn't you say so? I can float you alone. Oh, that'd be great. I could buy something for Arlene. You better. Your wife will want something nice. How much you need? Well, about 60. 
Sixty what? Bucks. Sixty bucks, buck? Henry. <laughs> you see what I did there? Buck I, bucks. I did. Just give me the dough, Henry. Well, now I only got fifty bucks. Well, that's all right. I'll take the fifty. Well, there you go, Buck. Enjoy. You can just owe me the other ten. Whoa, 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 whoa. Put on the brakes there, pal. How, how's that? Well, I asked you for sixty, right? Right. Well, you don't only give me fifty. Okay. Fifty from sixty. Is ten. And so that's what you owe me. Wait, 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 wait. Rack that up and shoot it again. I loaned you the money, not the other way around. Yeah, but I asked you for sixty and you only gave me fifty, so now you owe me ten. I wish I had Mrs. Everett with me right now. Who's Mrs. Everett? My fourth grade math teacher. I don't owe you squat. Oh, that's right. You owe me ten bucks. <laughs> How am I in debt to you when I loan you the money? Well, you're a hard one to deal with. If I'd known you'd be so persnickety, I'd have just gone to the bank. Listen, I got news for you. They, they ought to give you a hard time, too. Yeah, but they also would have given me the 60 bucks I asked for. <laughs> now, that's okay, Henry. I'm your friend. I won't push you. You can just give me the 10 whenever you can get to it. Whenever I get it? Well, when do I see my 50 again, Buck? Well, as soon as you pay up me what you owe me, then I can pay you, you see. Hey, look, I gave you everything I had in my wallet. Can I have some of that back so I can have some walking around money? Oh, yeah, no, no problem. Here's a 10. Thanks. You can pay me the 20 later. 20? <laughs> I thought I owed you 10. Well, now I'm down to 40 here. What am I supposed to get Arlene for 40 bucks? Well, I only have 10 now. Oh, but don't forget you owe me 20. Man, Buck, I better not ask any more of my money back or I'll go broke. Broke? What about me? All I got is measly $40. Hey, remember I owe you 20. What am I saying? Oh, don't worry, Henry. I won't let you forget. Thanks. Hey, softball team's selling hot chocolate. You can buy me one. I can buy... No, 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 you're right, you're right. I wouldn't want to owe you a hot chocolate on top of 20 bucks. Well, now you're catching on, Henry. I don't even know if I'm coming or going, Buck. Back to the station. Thanks, Buck, Henry. We'll check on the parade a little later. Now, folks, we here at the radio station are holding a Bible trivia contest. As part of the season, we're going to ask Bible-related questions. Now, you call in and answer, and you'll win a prize. And the grand prize is a pecan pie freshly made from Meg's Honk and Get It. And we thank Meg's for their sponsorship of our Bible trivia contest. Remember at Meg's, you ah, and they'll get it. Our first question, how many wise men were there at the birth of our Lord? Again, how many wise men were there at the birth of our Lord? Call into the station at 555-KDST. That's 555-KDST. Now, while we wait for a caller, we're going to go back down to the Christmas parade just about to kick off at the end of Main Street right here in Red Dust. Now, unbeknownst to folks down at the parade, we planted microphones on some of the floats to give you, the listener, a live action taste of what's going on down there at the parade. And we go to the float for the brownies. Sit down, girls. Amanda, unwrap your sash from around Lisa's throat. Thank you. It's cold out here, girl. I heard that. Have you seen my husband anywhere? No. He's supposed to bring me a blanket for the parade when it starts. Well, who knows? He could be anywhere. Patricia, what's your hubby getting you for Christmas this year? Oh, I already know. You do? Sure. I went and got it for him for me yesterday. <laughs> well, why'd you do that? Because we do this every dang year. He asked me not to tell him what to get me and he'll guess and get it. He never guesses right. He says he tries and tries but can't come up with nothing. I tell him, hun, you'd ease my mind by not using yours. <laughs> so I go out and get me something from him, wrap it, put it under the tree, and act surprised on Christmas morning when he congratulates himself on guessing right again. <laughs> wow. It's practically saved our marriage doing Christmas this way. Well, what's he getting you this year? Perfume. Perfume? What kind? Perhaps. Perhaps? Doesn't 
it costs over a hundred bucks per ounce? It does. For that amount of money, it be, should be called positively. <laughs> it smells so pretty. I love it. You better at that price. Hey, hey, now girls, settle down. Put the plastic snowman back on the bale of hay, Leandra. Good grief. You better do it, girl. No cookies for you later. My goodness. If she was mine, I would have twisted her little head off clean at the neck. <laughs> She's unruly, that one. It's called the belt where I come from. <laughs> Preach on and pass the play. I had to cut my own switch when I was a girl. When the belt wouldn't work, my mama would just use a cutting board that she had daddy had a handle to. Uh-huh. That's right. When a tree wasn't handy, my mama grabbed the yardstick from the utility room closet. And hurt. Man, did it ever. Now we use time out. Bunch of sissy mothers, if you ask me. We knew what a beating was. And appreciated it. I hear you. <clears throat> hey, what's your husband getting you for Christmas this year? Oh, I don't know. Probably something he can use. He can use? Yeah, see, he usually gets me something that he knows I won't or can't really use or he takes it. But well, he's buying gifts for himself. Well, now, in his defense, they do have my name on the tag when I unwrap them. Well, of course they do. He's sneaky. He's a lot of things, but sneaky ain't one of them. He knows that I know exactly what he's up to. That man? I know, I know. So I'm probably getting a chainsaw or a pair of snow boots that aren't my size. But we'll fit him exactly. That's right. I know it. It's just sad. I know. It's a shame. This is true, girl. I know. I wouldn't take that for a minute. Not one second. Yeah, I know. What are you getting him? A cookie sheet. Oh yeah, I like it. You go, girl. Elizabeth Ann, if you don't get off of Katie, I'm gonna send you home. Get off her right now or you won't be on the float. Good grief. And there you have it, folks, a bit of the action going on down at the startup to tonight's parade. And now, a word from one of our sponsors. Jail. It's a four letter word that starts with J and stands for trouble. Trouble starts with T and that rhymes with B and that stands for Bob Billy's Bail Bond Service. Now what do we do here at Bob Billy's? We specialize in getting you out of jail. That's our specialty. That's our job. If you get thrown in jail for a DUI, DWI, or any other acronym, call Bob Billy's. And we'll bring the cash to get you out of the hoose gal. You see, that's our service to you. You get in trouble with the law, we bail you out. It's that simple. And if you get thrown in jail in the month of December and we bail you out, you get a free cap. <laughs> what better way to begin your freedom from incarceration? The cap reads, the bail for jail came from Bob Billy. So commit those crimes, get thrown in jail, but let Bob Billy be the one to bail you out. That's Bob Billy's Bail Bond Service. When you're well in jail for something you've done wrong, call Bob Billy's Bail Bonds. And folks, it looks like we have a caller for our Bible Trivia Contest. Caller, how many wise men were there? Three? Incorrect, thank you. The question is, how many wise men were at the birth of the Lord? When? And you get a pecan pie from Meg's Honk and get it where it makes you, and they'll get it. And now we go to our mailbag for letters to Bubba Claus. This is a holiday tradition here at the station, and as you know, we collect letters for Bubba Claus, Santa's second cousin twice removed, or twice, as many Red Dustians say. And he passes... The request on to Santa Claus, our first letter to Bubba Claus. Dearest Bubba, hey, <laughs> hope everything's cool and all that, man. Hey, dig your duds. Listen, Bubba, it's a hard one here at the Poteet household. My son has athlete's foot and he ain't even athlete. <laughs> my daughter's on the honor roll at school and I'm trying my best to get her off of it as quick as I can. Have some heart, Bubba. It's been a tough one. I made too much money this year at the dirt track races, and my taxes are intense. To get the tax man off my back, I had to buy a brand new $40,000 truck. I'm embarrassed just to drive downtown. Bubba, please, please, Bubba. All I ask this year is to make me the kind of man that my dog thinks I am. Thanks, dude. Yours, Apple T. And that's our first letter to Bubba Claus. We'll have more later. Oh, whoop, looks like we have another caller. Go ahead, caller. Now yeah, you listen here, pal. These three wise men, I want my pie. That's incorrect, sir. Listen here, Gabe. I have been re-watching that movie about all that and these three. Still incorrect, sir. I'm sorry. Oh, that's what they got in that there movie. I can't help that. I want my pie. Answer the question correctly, you'll get it, sir. Thank you, folks. Hey, we're going to take a time out here at the station. We're going to bring our little Red Dust Gospel Trio.
to sing a little a cappella gospel music for you. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me. Leads me safely through the sinking sand, it is the Christ of Calvary. This would be my bread and Lord each day to help me do the best I can. For I need thy light to guide me day and night, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. And now we bring you Folks We Know and Love with Jan Poole. Now Jan visits one of Red Dust's own to show you all the folks we know and love in this great town. Take it away, Jan. Thank you. Welcome to Folks We Know and Love. And today, have one of the board directors that's with us, as well as one of the main play directors of the Red Dust Community Theater, Sharon Hibbler. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you, Jan. Break a leg. Excuse me? Break a leg. That's... Theater talk for have a good show. Well, thanks. Where did that saying come from? I'm glad you asked. Theater lore has it that actors say it to one another instead of good luck. Why? Because by saying break a leg, you're actually wishing the opposite to happen. So you wish them to break their leg? Yes! Isn't it great? <laughs> so you don't go around telling theater people to have a good show? Oh, well... That's okay, but really you should say, break a leg. Not an arm? Well, no. It just wouldn't mean the same thing. All right, so break a leg then. Thank you. Just be thankful you're not a dancer. Why, why is that? Because then you'd end up saying something you wouldn't want your mama to know you said. Oh, oh my. But it's okay. It's in French. <laughs> okay, I guess. So, Sharon, Hamlet. Yes. Did you come and see it? I sure did. Um, I have a few questions, Sharon. Fire away, Jan. My creative juices are ready. Uh, Sharon, I thought Hamlet was supposed to be a tragedy. Well, now Jan, that's been a long time tradition for Hamlet, but really, it's got some funny stuff in there. <laughs> it does. Uh, I thought it was supposed to be gloomy. Jan, honey. This is a funny show when you get right down to it. But it's always listed as a tragedy. Jan, it's Shakespeare. Who knows what the man meant? <laughs> Only Shakespeare knew and he's dead and we can't ask him. <laughs> but he seemed happy to have a new stepdad in your version. Yes, absolutely. I wanted to reflect the current situation of many of our youth. Young people are constantly getting new step-parents. Hamlet was no different. He wanted to show today's youth that it's okay to love your new stepdaddy. But doesn't he want to kill him? Jan, you know how young folks are. They say a lot of things they don't mean. 
I knew when I first read the play that we would have trouble right out the chute if we didn't lighten things up a bit. It was also a lot shorter than it usually is. You got that right. Four hours. I don't think so. Ninety minutes and we're out of there. <laughs> I miss the to be or not to be speech. He said it. He did. Yeah. And then we cut right to Ophelia entering and him playing like he didn't like her. <laughs> I thought he wanted to send her to a nunnery. Jan. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> don't take this the wrong way, but non-theater folk. Just don't always get what the author intended. <laughs> Didn't you see the way I had Hamlet wink at Ophelia during that scene to let her know he was just kidding? I thought there was something wrong with his eye. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was just kidding her. Hamlet had no intention of sending her to a nunnery. Come on, Jan, get with the program, hon. Well, let's move on. I saw the flyer for this year's season. It looks like you have the odd couple on it again this year. Oh, yeah. People just love it. And it's so good to expose folks to dramatic literature that is so rarely seen. I thought everyone did, Neil Simon. Not hardly. It's our responsibility as a community theater to expose folks to quality dramatic literature. That's not seen that often. That's right. We do the odd couple every couple of years or so let the folks get a good idea of what's really out there in the world of theater. But I saw that play over in Flats Flat last year. You did. And what did you think? No, let me answer for you. <laughs> It was lacking. It was. Now, I hate to criticize, but they just didn't have Felix and Oscar cast right. One was a neat freak and the other was a slob. What more is there? The whole internal monologue of angst and agony over divorce. I thought it was a comedy. Jan, Jan, Jan. Is divorce ever funny? It is in that play. See, there you go again. People of the theater really know what this play is about. No one laughed in your production of it, Sharon. They weren't supposed to. It's divorce, Jan. It ain't funny. I've had two, and I didn't laugh either time. <laughs> Any other Simon that you plan on doing? We may do Barefoot in the Park next summer. You know, it's rarely done as well, so it's probably time. How about next year's season? Have you thought that far ahead yet? Oh, sure. Theater people always plan the next season of plays. We're no different at the Red Dust Community Theater. So, any hints? Well, I've got planned to do Oklahoma at least two different times during the season. You know how rarely that old show is done. It's an oldie but a goodie. Any radical ideas for the show? Well, I wouldn't say radical, but I was thinking about cutting all the songs. No one really knows them anyway, and I'm thinking of calling it Acapella Oklahoma. <laughs> I thought acapella was without music for the songs. That's right. It won't have any music, Jan. <laughs> and no songs? I'm, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> we'll just have to see where the creative juices take me. And what about Christmas show this year, Sharon? We're opening a Christmas carol this weekend. But didn't you do that last year? We did. But listen, Jan. Folks aren't really that familiar with the story. Yeah. It's Charles Dickens, after all, and anyway. I've got a new exciting design concept. What's that? A Christmas Carol, a la Mad Max. Scrooge in a black leather, in black leather and wears a football arm pads. Tiny Tim carries a sawed off shotgun. It's gonna be unique. <laughs> Sounds like it. Thank you, Sharon Hibbler. And go out and support the Red Dust Community Theater. It's a real experience. Thank you, Jan. And now, a public service announcement from Red Dust Volunteer Fire Chief, Joe Hillman. Joe. Hello, Red Dust. Tis the season to be jolly, and for me, uh, I need to tell you that jolly is not equivalent with stupid. Okay, Red Dust, how do I put this? Fireplace ashes. Now, some of us here in Red Dust have fireplaces, and we love them. I have one. Keeps the place good and warm all winter long, and saves on the propane bills. But red dust, why, oh why, do you dump your ashes with the hot coals in them? Can you just answer me that? Well, no you can't, but the volunteer fire chief can have hope, can't he? Listen, red dust, when your logs burn down to ash overnight, you have hot coals all nice and snug down in there. And hey, they're hot. And guess what? Nope, didn't guess right. <laughs> they can start fires. Hot coals start fires. 
The all red and glowing, these little hot coals, they can burn down your yards, your forest, and yes, red dust, even you. So red dust, quit dumping your hot ashes in your dumpsters and your front yards and in your backyards and in the back of your truck. You'll burn it all down. Remember, remember the fire I put out at Freddie Culpepper's house, do you? Well, I know you do, because I saw most of you there roasting weenies. He lost his 67 pickup. You want to know why? Well, I know you don't, but I'm going to tell you anyway. He dumped his fireplace ashes in the back of his truck with a bunch of trash and whoosh, burned up, burned the cinders. Fireplace ashes, red dust. Say it with me. Fireplace ashes. Pay attention, red dust. Well, I know you won't, but at least I'll be able to sleep at night. Back to you. Thank you, Joe. It's that time of year again to announce the best slash worst newspaper headlines of the year and unfortunately many of them are from the Red Dust Examiner and Chronicle. Here goes. Deaf Mutes gets new hearing and killing. Police begin campaign to run down jaywalkers. Milk drinkers are turning to powder. Safety experts say school bus passengers should be belted. Quarter of a million Chinese live on water. Farmer Bill dies in house. And there you have it, folks, the top best slash worst newspaper headlines of the year. And now for another letter to Santa Claus's cousin, Bubba. Dearest Bubba, just a heads up, Bubba, if you ride with Santa Claus this year, got pork rinds and six packs to milk cookies. Bubba, I got some stuff I need from the big man this year. Uh, new waders, fishing pole, bait. Preferably, preferably rubber bait. I uh, also need some new mud flaps for the truck, the kind with the Yosemite Sam on them. A carton of six for my old lady. Transmission oil from my garden tractor. Shells from a modified 410 deer, a deer stand. A coverall crescent witch. Four wheeler muffler for a 71 Mustang washer and dryer. That's also for the old lady. My brother out of jail. Mama too. Uh, glitter finish from a bass boat. A cooler in 12 pack microwave again for the old lady customized lighter holster that I can wear on my belt and some circus peanuts I know it's a lot to ask for this year and I know it's a lot less than I asked for last year but you know times is tough and I ain't been all that good so I'm gonna try and make it easy on you thank you Bob Harris and that was another letter to Bubba Claus we're going back to the parade now, folks. We have a hidden mic with the local rodeo club. They are riding their horses in the parade again this year. It's cold enough out here to freeze my breath. <sighs> See that? Come on, Sid, quit fooling around. When are we gonna start this thing? My horse is getting used to bumps. That's cause he's a wimp. At least my horse don't have gas. Man, said that dude stinks. What'd you feed him? Hay, bull, and other stuff. What else? It's a new feed mixture I got, Mike. Give me a break. Give me a break. That thing is bloated. He's gonna rupture any minute now. He is not. You remember last year's debacle? That ain't gonna happen again. Yeah, the cleaning bill for the band uniforms alone set you back a month's income. It wasn't that bad. That bad? The Poteet kid had so much horse poo in him, uh, on him that he couldn't even <laughs> see the whites of his eyes. That's not true. And he was the drum major. How's a boy supposed to lead the band when he's covered in your horse's poo? <laughs> one time, Mike. One time it happens and you won't let me live it down. Neither will the band teacher. <laughs> well, he's persnickety. And the band. Ah, oh, you're just kids. A little poop never hurt anyone. Except for last year. What about that flute player that got the skin rash? It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. She puffed up like a helium balloon on steroids. She still gets the shakes if you mention the word horse around her. Yeah, hey, you're exaggerating. Listen, Sid, that horse of yours looks like he's about to blast off. Uh, and, and if I recall, He's got quite a reach. Oh, bull. 20 feet or so, if I remember correctly. That ain't true. And hey, whatever you may think, trombones don't sound very good when they're clogged up with horse chunks. It didn't clog no trombones. It did too. When they blasted the first Noel, they shot a, a horn full of pucky into the back of the clarinet section, knocked half of them out. It was a disaster. 
my horse is under control this year. He's under something. Look at him shoot that back leg up. You know what that means. He's about to rock it like a fire horse. You better tell him kids to evacuate the premises. I ain't gonna do nothing because he ain't gonna do nothing. Yes, he He's is. just nervous. Yes, he is. He's thinking that his owner poisoned him again with some junky feed. He ain't neither. Listen, Sid, I ain't joking. He looks like he's about to pop like a firecracker on the 4th of July. And I don't, I don't see the vet around anywhere. You just trying to make me upset, that's all. I'm trying to save you from being on the front page of the paper again, shoveling horse poo. What would your mother say? My mother? She didn't get to church for a whole month. <laughs> oh boy. See, he sounds sick even. You can say that again. You kids better take cover. My horse is about to spray y'all down. <laughs> Mike, give me some help here. That didn't sound good. You're on your own, pal. <laughs> Mike, he's got that look. He's got to blow. And folks, we're going to break right there. I think we played you too much of that. There you have it. Woo! The Christmas parade about to get started, we hope. Now we're going to break for a Christmas poem by Red Dust on Poet Lariette, Zane Dobson. Zane. Thank you. And I've entitled this one, The Night of Four Christmas. The night afore Christmas, and all through the trailer, not a kid was stirring, not Bodine, Geraldine, or Taylor. The kids were all wrapped in a quilt and dreams of giving their daddy guilt. My old lady and her moo moo, me and my John Deere cap had laid down for a long winter's siesta. And then on the front porch, there was noise. I got my gun thinking it was the neighbor boys. To the polyester curtains I ran like lightning, opened the door to see something frightening. And then in front of my eyes did appear a crusty old codger in red drinking a beer. And I could tell from his drawers that it could only be old Santa Claus. I resisted shooting his deer on sight and dressing them out in the middle of the night. But he belched and shouted, Come on, keep it, dander, blitzkrieg victim and stupid! Oh, his eyes, how bloodshot and red. He looked just like my Uncle Fred. His mouth curved, open to burp. I thought he might upchuck or erp. The stub of a cigar clamped in his mouth. Stars and bars on his buckles said he was from the South. He had a dirty beard and state trooper belly that quaked when he cackled like Mama's peach jelly. He didn't say a word and jumped in his sled, throwing toys and stuff right in our flower bed. He burped to his team and flew off in his back and yelled, Christmas is better when you're a redneck. I thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Zane. And now a word from one of our sponsors. Problem with crabgrass. We just salt in general bad men or Johnson grass, even though it's winter. Got weeds in your flower bed? Want to rid the world of tears? Well, Gentle Gents, WB740 stroke 530 stroke Q stroke double knot weed killer sprays for you. Chemically proven to remove weeds quicker and more efficiently than any other weed killer on the market. Give your crops room to breathe, flourish, and grow. That's Gentle Gents, WB740 stroke 530 stroke Q stroke double knot weed killer spray. Want weeds destroyed down to the roots? Try Gentle Gents, WB740 stroke 530 stroke Q stroke double knot weed killer spray. That's the cleanest flower garden in town. Use Gentle Gin's WB740 Stroke 530 Stroke Q Stroke Devil Knot Weed Killer Spray. When you want the weeds to go away, it's Gentle Gin's WB740 Stroke 530 Stroke Q Stroke Devil Knot Weed Killer Spray. The Gentle Gin takes no responsibility for lost livestock, pets, fish, loss of sight, hearing, taste, touch, smell, hair burn off the face, back, back of chest, loss of eyebrows, loss of memory, loss of feeling from the neck up, stuttering, uncontrolled drooling, condition of bouncing, and other anomalous physical reactions from too much contact with the product. Thank you. <laughs> we now bring to our studios Mark Hillsworth the local Votech teacher of speech, public address, and all things oratory. Welcome, Mark. Uh, hello, all. What are you bringing to us today, Mark? Well, I was come on the air here at the station and hopes of helping improve our community's communication. Yeah, let's be honest. Communication is something that you and I do all day, every day, 24-7. So. If it's uh, something we do all the time, then we should learn how to do it properly. You're right, Mark. Communication is a very important skill to have. Important? Oh, it could be a matter of life or death. 
Let's be honest here. We all like to wave and say hi around here, right? Sure. Well, listen up. Doing that to someone in Barflokistan can get you shot. I didn't know that, Mark. Uh, not very many people do. You see, communication is a matter of living and dying. So you need to know how to do it. I agree. In some countries, just smiling at someone of the opposite sex means you're engaged. Whoa, wow! Yep. And in England, trunk doesn't mean trunk and boot doesn't mean boot. Oh, now that could be confusing. You better believe it. So what are you going to teach us today, Mark? Well, we're going to review a common phrase that we all hear a lot around here in Red Dust. What's that? Bless your heart. Oh yeah, my mom uses that one all the time. Mine too. In fact, I dare say there's a lot of grandmas and mothers out there who use this very special phrase. They do, they do. And you know, it's got a special meaning. I know. I mean, what's it mean to bless someone's heart anyway? Well, let's examine the phrase, shall we? Oh, let's. Now, if you were raised like me. With the strap. Exactly. Well, you can probably recall how uh, mom always said that if you didn't have something nice to say about someone, not to say anything at all. That's absolutely right. My, my grandma beat that into us, and I do mean that literally. My mama too. She's a good Christian lady, and she didn't want any of us kids mouthing off about someone. Too true. But you know, sometimes you just can't help it. There are some folks out there that just get your goat and you end up saying something critical about them. That's right, we do it all the time. But we were raised to not do that sort of thing. Again, you're right. So what do you do when you say something tacky, although true, about someone? Tell us. Well, this is where your bless your heart comes in. You see, if you use this at the end of a, a tirade or about someone, that you uh, absolve yourself of all guilt. Oh, I like it! Yeah, this way you can say anything you want, and in the eyes of all that's holy, you're in the free and clear. Give us an example. Well, I'm glad you asked. Now, here's how it works. You know Sharon down at Meg's house can get it. Yeah? Well, you know she's been unfaithful to her husband. She hardly takes care of her kids. She's late to work all the time. She doesn't know how to buy groceries. She always brings green bean casseroles the church social mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> is uh, she's buck too mm -hmm. she has horrible breath ingrown toenails can hardly spell her own name can't remember her kids names half the time is rude to everyone wears cut off shorts to church mm -hmm. litters never mows her front yard and has tacky tattoo of someone named earl on her arm and couldn't pass her senior year and shoplift any chance she gets Bless her heart. Oh, I see. Yeah. I love it. Great, isn't it? And it gives you a license to say whatever you want. Whenever you want. That's right. And it's all good. No harm done. I mean, you're only telling the truth, right? That's right. And then you bless their heart. His heart, her heart, whoever's heart. Is it always used to negate all the negative things you've said? Oh, no, no, no. You can say something like, well, he's sick with the flu. Has been puking all night. <laughs> bless his heart. Oh, that's good, yeah. Exactly. Question now, can you bless your own heart? Well, now that's really improper etiquette. Mm. It's a little selfish. Well, let me show you. Uh, I've been such a jerk to my wife and I don't ever pay the bills. Bless my heart. Ooh, no. No, no. see, it don't work. Doesn't work, doesn't no. work, no. Uh, and, and, and one last thing. If you'll notice, I put a pause right before I say bless your heart. Yeah, I did notice that. Yeah, that's the proper way. No pause and it doesn't mean the same thing. Yeah. Watch. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> he got uh, he got bit by a gator, bless his heart. No, no, it didn't yeah, work. Totally, that sound totally. right. Yeah. Communication is a skill now. You have to put the pause in there for full effect. All right, here I go. She's such a crackhead. Bless her heart. That's it. Oh, I love it. That's out done. Now, you can bless all their hearts you want to and say all you want because you're, you're going to bless their hearts anyway and no harm done. Oh, thank you, Mark. Thank you. Remember, communication is about living and dying. you got to have it to live. Communication makes the world go round. Thank you, Mark. Bless your heart. Mark Hillsworth from the Red Dust Votech. Whoop!
looks like we have a caller. Go ahead, caller! Hey, a call about the pecan pie contest. You mean our Bible trivia contest? Listen, I'm sitting here reading a good book and there was three wise men. Does it say three? Well, no. Then there you go. But hey, wait a minute. They brought him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That's three. That's three gifts. Well, if they each brought one, that's three. That's only three gifts. Well, how are we supposed to know how many wise men if the good book don't say? That's the answer. Well, then I want my pecan pie. But that wasn't your answer. You said three. Well, now I'm saying this is a trick question because we don't know and I want my pie. I'm sorry you guessed three and that's incorrect and so no pie. Hey, pal, where's the radio station anyway? I, it's just a contest in the Christmas spirit. I'm about to make you a Christmas spirit, pal. I want my pie. Caller, I'm hanging up right now. Listeners, <laughs> ugh, the pecan pie is still available as part of our Bible <laughs> trivia contest. Whew, and now, folks... Before we go back to the Christmas parade and our hidden mics, a couple of radio ads. Pay attention. Free one can of pork and beans with purchase of three bedroom, two bath home. And our second ad for the evening, German Shepherd, 85 pounds, neutered, speaks German free. If you're interested, call the station at 555-KDST. And now we go back to the Christmas parade and one of our hidden microphones. Hey, baby, when's this thing start? Uh, I'm freezing out here. I heard that. Shut up, Sammy Joe. I think we're waiting on Santa Claus. They should check the saloon. Hush it, Tommy. But, baby... Listen, hon, I love you, but you'd be out of your depth in a parking lot puddle. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> See? Where's the FFA float? At the back. Ah, uh, they're always putting that at the back. I came here to support the FFA float, not some girly scout troop. Amen. Tommy. Sorry, baby. You know how I feel about you, Tommy, but you've been working with glue too much. <laughs> I know, sorry. Well, listen, girls. Tommy and me, we got some fishing down at the Woho so to do after this thing, so sooner this parade starts, sooner we can get out of your hair, sooner you can go shop. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Oh yeah, fishing. That reminds me. Did you bring your list, Angie? I did. I like doing this double dating thing, Angie. But I'm about ready to spend some money. Well, well it's not get carried away, honey. Hey, am I your wife? Almost. <laughs> <laughs> almost only counts and things that almost counts him, buddy. Huh? You know, between between you and Tommy, you guys could break a rubber anvil. <laughs> Remember when we did that? <laughs> girl, girl, where did we go wrong? It was the prom of 98. <laughs> they asked us to go, and we said yes. Mercy. Tommy, what do you have in your mouth? Hey, Tommy, what you munching on? Give me something. <laughs> What'd you tell your buddy here to spit out whatever he's got in his mouth? Well, he's your semi-husband. <laughs> Don't remind me. Listen, baby, do you guys have all you need to go fishing tonight? I think so. Pole, tackle. Oh, man, Tommy, what are you doing? <laughs> spit that out of your mouth, honey. <laughs> oh. That is gross. Tommy, I'll swan. I cannot take you anywhere. What? I was just keeping the worms warm for fishing. <laughs> Dude. Baby, please don't ever let me do something like that. You did. Last week, you had menace in your mouth. Oh, well, that's different. That's for beer. It was, it was a bad. Hey, everybody knows that you got to keep the worms warm if you're going to fishing in the winter. Man, honey, you know I love you, but if I gave you a penny for your thoughts, I'd get change back. <laughs> well, that's something, baby. <laughs> Mercy sex, baby. Bless his heart. <laughs> Somebody has to. Uh, hey, wait, hey, I said I think we're about ready to kick this thing off. And there you have it, more from the Red Dust Christmas Parade. And we have confirmation that it is just about ready to start, folks. And now we're going to bring Zane Dobson, Red Dust on Poet Lariat, back here in the studio for one more Christmas poem. Thank you. I've entitled this one, Christmas Without My Missus. 
It's a sad one at the docks in Christmas. The eggnog has gone bad in the freezer. It's Yuletide season without my missus as she done took off and left this old geezer. Oh no, it's Christmas without my missus. She took the truck, the dog, all my stuff. The tree is trimmed, but I've got no missus. And it's left me mad and in quite a huff. She even had the gall to take my gun, leaving me to fend for myself all alone. I'd like to say she was my only one, but I'd be a liar, cold as stone. Oh, now it's Christmas without my missus. It's Christmas without my missus, and I'd like to say a mister, but I don't. I hope the truck breaks down, the dog dies, and my gun shoots a hole in her foot and all my stuff bursts into flame. Oh, now it's Christmas without my missus. It's Christmas without my missus. Merry Christmas, everyone. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Zane. We're going to bring the trio out for one final song. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory line way. And now for a public service announcement from the church of the What's Happening Now. Hello there, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Lewis of the Church of What's Happening Now bringing you a message of love. <clears throat> we here at the Church of the What's Happening Now want you to know that we love you. <laughs> and what you were and what you are and what you are going to become. We believe in love at the Church of the What's Happening Now and love believes in us. And with love and hope, we got two of the big three out the way. <laughs> the last one being faith. This holiday season at the Church of the What's Happening Now, we're going to have an all-night candlelight, multicultural, totally diverse, equi-unilateral nativity scene. <laughs> and we want to invite you all to come. You see, we put the f in faith <laughs> by giving you belief in our special nativity scene. Our Mary is from Lithuania. Our Joseph just learned to speak English and is from the Philippians. <laughs> the wise men are the three Gapopnikov brothers who just moved here from Barkflekistan and run the tire store and malt shop on Main Street. <laughs> The innkeepers are our very own Fred Lloyd from Lloyd's Dry Cleaning and Tag Agency. And our baby Jesus is a stuffed panda bear donated by little Dina Hammett. <laughs> you see, <clears throat> we show you our faith by showing you our faith. <laughs> and who are we at the Church of the What's Happening Now? 
We're from all over the globe. So come join us for our all night candlelight, multicultural, totally diverse, uni equal unilateral nativity scene. I got my tang tangled a bit. Where we'll be singing hymns in a multitude of languages and accents. We're happening and we're now. We're all night candlelight, multicultural, totally diverse, uni equal unilateral nativity scene. And we love you. We here at the station are very much about giving our listeners as much culture as they can possibly stand. With us this evening is Red Dust's own famous opera star Prima Belladonna. Miss Belladonna comes in from time to time and sings us snippets of famous opera songs, and we here at the station translate. Good evening, Miss Belladonna. Good evening. We are very pleased to be here this evening. <laughs> Miss Belladonna, what song are you going to sing for us this evening? We would like to sing something to go with the magical time of Christmas. That is great. Do you know Ave Maria? Oh, I do. I do. Can you translate for us? I, I can. I give it a try. Do so. My name is Mary. I am very pregnant right now. Mary tells Joseph, find in quickly. Again, my name is Mary. Just want to make sure that you got that. <laughs> and you're telling me I have to give birth in this hog trough? Are you kidding me? Are you serious? Are you really? Joseph, look at me. Hello? Are you, are, you, are you sure that this is a hog trough? Hello? You can call it a manger if you want to, Joseph, but I am not. I don't. Don't give me that look. I don't appreciate that at all. Thank you. Ave Maria. Again, if you didn't get it, my name is Mary. <laughs> oh, that, Miss Belladonna, that was just beautiful. It was gorgeous. We know this. Oh, what are you going to bring us next time? We will bring something from Mozart, Don Giovanni, something light and simple for the people of Redas. Oh, great. Thank you, Miss Prima Belladonna. Thank you so much. Your gratitude pleases us. Grazie. Oh, isn't she beautiful? Isn't she wonderful? And here's our last letter to Bubba Claus for the evening. Hey Bubba, I got a long list for Christmas this year, and I know you're going to get your cousin Sandy to fill my order. Remember last Memorial Day? <laughs> now you probably don't. They have a kegger in the horse tank? Yeah, that was you. That's all I'm saying, Bubba. But let's be very clear, I have the negatives. In fact, one press of the enter button, and the pics go viral within a week on the internet. <laughs> You should definitely practice a camera-free policy for future gatherings. Look, you can call this blackmail or what have you. I don't care. You say blackmailing. I say me a happy Christmas holiday under the tree. <laughs> know what I'm saying? Sign, you know who. Oh, P.S. Uh, just FYI, kegs aren't meant to be punctured like that. And thank you. There you have it, folks. Bubba Claus, blackmailed for Christmas presents. We have another caller. Go ahead, caller. Hey, man, I'm calling about the pecan pie. Listen, sir, look, we gave the answer away on that, so we'll have to start again tomorrow. Look, dude, I'm going to get that pecan pie if it kills you. Me? Yep, you. Well, the contest is over. It's over when I say it's over. And there were three of them. Caller. Nope. I put a cork in it. I even know their names. 
Casper and not as in the ghost. Oh, sir. Melchior and Balthazar. Sir, their names aren't mentioned anywhere. Yes, they are, doesn't it? <laughs> Read them off to me. I just did. What book, chapter, and verse? Say what? Book, chapter, and verse. No, man, I'm reading the credits off that their nativity movie. All right, sir, sir, that's enough. Folks, folks, listen, listen. The, the contest is over. We'll try again tomorrow. We're going to go out one final time to the Christmas parade before it actually begins. And I believe the mic that we're going to listen in on is the Basketball Boys float with Coach Henley. All right, boys, come on, gather around, gather around, listen up. On this team, we're all united in a common goal. Let's keep each other warm. <laughs> now, now, quit your belly aching, Jesse. I've had a dime for every time one of you boys whined. Well, be up to my armpits and pictures of FDR. Hey, Coach, when does this thing kick off? Now, why are you asking me that, son? I'm only the coach. You know, you can observe a lot just by watching, so do that. Coach, do we really have practice after the parade? Well, does a vulture bombing on carry on, son? Uh. Now, look, fellas, you gotta practice so you can practice. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Anyone? <laughs> Uh, Coach, don't we have a game for another two weeks? Why not? Listen, you want to win. Anyone? <laughs> I'll say sure, Coach. Well, well that, that's good. Well, now listen, boys. No coach has ever won a game by what he knows. It's what his players know that counts. Now that means you've got to practice what you know, because if you don't, you'll forget what you practice to know what you know. But, Coach, we only play as good as you think we are. Well, then, fellas, we're sunk like the Titanic after the iceberg. <laughs> but, Coach, what about our game against Flats Flat? Son, we lost that one. Yeah, how come? Boys, we didn't underestimate them. They were a bit better than we thought. Uh, listen, never underestimate when guesstimating the opposing team because what you do, and you, you guesstimate them, and it may be an underestimatement, and that could spread to a catastrophe out there on the court. Hey, 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 coach, they're signaling and we're about to go. Oh, all right, all right fellas. Now, you, you guys uh, line up alphabetically by height. Uh, coach? Oh, okay, scratch that. Just, uh, I want you guys to pair up in groups of three and then line up, line up in a circle. <laughs> Coach, how are we... Look, you want to run suicides down the street? <laughs> Anyone? Good. Now pay attention, boys. Suicides is suicides does, and we don't want to do what suicides does, because, well, that leads to death, and your parents probably wouldn't like that real well when you get home. <whistles> okay, now, everybody, somebody strap Roy to the furniture, dolly. Here we go. And that's it, folks. It sounds like the Christmas parade has kicked off on Main Street right here in Red Dust. We're going to finish our broadcast with Red Dust in Review as you watch the parade roll on by. Oh, Christmas time in Red Dust is fun for everyone. Caroling with the 4-H'ers, decorating Main Street, getting homemade candy down at Meg's Honk and Get It, shopping in town, getting the free apple cider at the feed store, Mrs. Hamilton's Divinity, the parade, and a host of other great things that make Christmas here in our hometown wonderful. I saw the mayor the other day and he said things had never been better for our little town. Okay, look, so the economy is still on the fritz. Jobs are still very hard to come by for some of our citizens. The holidays aren't always robust with Christmas cheer for everyone. The mayor simply meant that we are still here, we're still together, and our town is rolling with the punches just like other little towns. With so many of these other small towns drying up because folks are moving away, red dust is still on the map. Why? Well, sure, not everything is springtime and roses around here, but we have some things you can't get at other places. You know, we can still walk in our park without any fear of being mugged. We know the high schooler checking us out at the grocery store, and we know their folks. We can get a cup of coffee without all the frou-frou junk with it, and we can afford it too. And we know our baker by name. Of course, he knows us by name and knows where we live. <laughs> and other things that our small town has that others just don't have. Now, Christmas gives us time to settle in for the winter. 
Reflect on what all we've done this year. And see family, whether we want to or not. Now our joy shouldn't be in the number of gifts wrapped under the tree. Shouldn't be. It should be in the fact that we still have each other another year. Still got food on the table. We still have a roof over our heads. And folks, listen. To a lot of outsiders looking in, those are blessings that are just beyond counting. Merry, red, Merry Christmas, Red Dust. And thank you. That's it for the Oakey Red Dust Christmas Review. Our cast for this evening is Kevin Warden, Sean Martin, B.J. Eckert, Cassie Engel, Katie Caton, and myself, Brett Jones. Look, thank you for coming out on this cold evening. Take care of yourselves and each other. God bless you and a Merry Christmas.